Good afternoon. This is the Senate Institutions Committee. We're meeting on Tuesday, March 22nd. I'm uh, Senator Dick McCormick, Vice Chair of the Committee, uh, presiding in the absence of the Chair, who will be joining us soon. Uh, we have going around the table, uh, we have Senator Engels, Senator Mazza, Senator Brown. And uh, our topic right now, first topic is uh, we're hearing from the Department of Corrections on an update. Um, we are being, we do have an audience other than people who are actually involved in this work. So please, if you must use jargon, explain what it means. Okay, thank you. And we'll hear first from, uh, and forgive me, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce uh, the name. Uh, Nicholas is DML. Good morning, Senator. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Nick Demmel. I'm the commissioner of the Department of Corrections and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be with you today uh, to talk to you about the, the planning process for uh, a new women's facility or facilities. Um, so we've got with us uh, a couple of our team members who are focused uh, on this effort and, and I hope we can get them to weigh in as well. Um, with me, I've got uh, Al Cormier, who's our Chief of Operations, uh, Matt D'Agostino, who is our Interim Deputy Commissioner, Kathy Astomborski, who is our new Director of Women's Services. We're excited to introduce her to this committee. Um, she will also be championing our effort to um, guide the department through the planning process and get us through our decision points uh, when we hit those points along the way. Um, and then I think there's also um, one of our colleagues from BGS here, and I'll let her introduce herself if, if she'd like, um, who can weigh in on any of the um, construction RFP type process. Uh, but I thought first it might be helpful to give you an update on the timeline and where we are in that initial, from initial RFP to the second RFP. Um, and for that, I think I'll hand it over to Al um, to give you an update on, on where we've been and, and where we are in the process now. And then maybe Kathy can speak to how we're, how we're managing our planning process, and where we're going in the future. Great, thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Uh, Al Cormier, Chief of Operations for the Department of Corrections. Um, so we are moving forward with this, this project, uh, working collaboratively with BGS. They, they have submitted the RFP that is on the street for review and, and bidding. Um, we have a meeting, I believe it's next week, on the, uh, the status of the bid and then to bring the Koresh from uh, BGS can certainly speak more to that. Um, but we continue to meet with BGS on a regular basis regarding the status of that RFP and our, our own internal work working group um, comprised of, of Kathy Astaborski, our facilities director, uh, Matt Nall, uh, Teresa, or Desiree Crump, who's the assistant superintendent at the current Chindon Regional Correctional Facility, um, and, and various other members. We've uh, recently met with the DV network, um, the state network, with the advocacy groups that are providing services and programs inside of Chittenden currently, um, bringing them in as stakeholders for communication and, and their thoughts and ideas on, on moving forward with this project and, and what those uh, those programs may look like, both inside of uh, the current facility as well as the uh, women's reentry facility, should that, that actually come to fruition. Um, members of our DOC team are, are traveling to Maine this week to view the, the current Reentry facility that, that uh, the main Department of Corrections hosts and operates. Um, we'll be checking out that facility as well as discussing their programs with them uh, regarding reentry and, and workforce. Uh, we'll be checking out their program building, which is a newly constructed building that was just completed this summer. Um, so we're hoping to bring back some, some thoughts and ideas. And, having discussion with them on, on pain points, lessons learned in their construction of their project, um, and looking forward to moving forward with our with our own project. Mm 
questions from the committee, or did you did just did you just go silent, or are you done? No, I that was that was really okay. it at this point. Um, in, unless there are questions, certainly happy to answer. Hey, thank you. No, no. Okay, uh, we'll move on. Thank you. Um, first, before we go any further, Commissioner, I want to apologize for not knowing how to pronounce your name. I've heard it spoken. I had never actually seen it written out. I didn't make the connection. I do apologize. No, no, it's uh, no problem at all. You know, for a for a four letter name, it, people sure do have a, a hard time with it. So I apologize for my forebears deciding that was what we were going by. I pictured two M's and an E and a double L at the end or something. Um, uh, so, oh no, my God, hold on, I'm going to get it. Kathy Astemborski. Am I close? You're oh, muted. Kathy, we can't hear you. No, we still silent. Well, I think you did get the name right, but now we can hear her confirm that. Yeah. Let's see what she can put in. I'm hearing noise. Does that work at all? Yes. There we go. We got you. We got you. Okay. All right. Good. So you got the name. That was perfect. Um, so I'm just starting as the director of women's services. And um, last week we had sort of a kickoff meeting with some of the stakeholders uh, who we wanted to hear from regarding the facility plans. Uh, we met with some folks from the Vermont Network and uh, Vermont Works for Women, Mercy Connections and Lund and had a great conversation that was just intended to really listen to them and um, hear what their ideas were, concerns, and I think it was um, a, it was a great conversation. And I think the beginning of you know having a lot of interaction with with those stakeholders as we move forward. And as um, Chief Cormier said, we're going to the facility in Maine this weekend, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about the facility and and the department, but also that our department, you know, has a lot of things um, already online that are, you know, maybe from a philosophy standpoint as well. Um, so I think it's going to give us some good ideas to, to build on, but that we've got a lot of energy um, going into this project and that we have a lot of opportunity to really make this facility work for um, the population that we serve. So, yeah, so this is going to be a different facility outside of the prison, and it will be a transition period into the uh, into this other facility, and it will, they're not done their sentences yet, but they're getting to, towards the end of their sentences, and this is going to help them uh, transition into back into society. Is that the plan? It's definitely a work in progress, and there's a lot of decisions to be made, but reentry is going to be a big focus. And um, the facility that we're visiting in Maine, they actually have two buildings, and one is focused on reentry. So we have a couple different um, options available to us that we still need to work through. But um, as I said, reentry is going to be a big focus, um, and that we want to put a lot of things in place to make that a more uh, meaningful. Um, process that the women go through as they go back into the community. And is it being developed because the program, the, the system that is in place now, is it working? There's too much recidivism, or what? What's the emphasis on the new on the new program? What's what, what's what's causing it? What's causing the whole uh, the new building, the new program? What's what's the reason behind it? I can I can take that one. Um, it's 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 a multi-level, multi-faceted approach in, in what we're taking. But really, the, the impetus behind this is the, the condition and the age of the current facility, um, the current Chindon facility built in 1970, I believe. Um, the deferred maintenance on that building is, is pretty high. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done inside that building 
um, to really bring it up to an environment where, where we see it as really being able to humanize the experience inside for both the staff and the incarcerated population, um, really bringing a more gender responsive approach to, to our supervision and, and how we conduct our programming. Um, the, the topic of a new women's facility has, has been on the agenda for, for quite a while. And as we um, started in on our work with the, the Prison Research and Innovation Network project and then visited um, the main facility, I think starting two years ago with our, our work with uh, UVM and, and UVM's work with the University of Southern Maine, everything that we began to learn about the Maine Department of Corrections, they, they offered a lot of what we would like to implement here in, in uh, Vermont. So where we started with basically talking about a new women's facility, then we really started after seeing what, what they offer, um, really started focusing on the reentry aspect of it, given the, the custody level of, of a majority of our population coming back as furlough returns, hoping that we can um, prepare them better for return to the community. As, as Kathy said, the, uh, the reentry program will be a big component of that. Our work with the advocates in the community and, and designated agencies will hopefully assist us and in preparing that, that population for a return, um, a successful return. Thank you. Okay. Um, the, uh, the idea of re-entry, uh, that's sort of based on the other, that statistically, if I understand it correctly, statistically, women are less likely to be uh, in trouble for, physically violent behavior. It's a lot of bounce checks and selling drugs and, and, and so on. But there are some who have been pretty brutal. There are, there are outliers, but there, are they included in, in the re-entry uh, philosophy? Well, they, they would be. Um, I think historically in Vermont, the, the way sentencing works, pretty much everybody's getting out of jail at some point. Um, and we have to prepare everybody for that. And while we do have people convicted of murder and, and people awaiting trial for, for murder inside our women's facility now, there's a strong possibility that they may eventually make parole and, and be returned to the community. And we have to, we have to get them ready as well. Um, I think historically we see a lot of victimization issues with, with the population that, that comes through that, that front door at that Chinden. Um, we want to help help them deal with, with those those issues um, through the, the work and the, the trauma work and the, the gender responsive work um, and, and giving them the tools to, to succeed once once they leave. So, yeah, I, I think we, we have to incorporate everybody into our reentry planning. We haven't gone through the full list, but let me say I'd like someone from corrections to kind of explain what exactly the program is involves. We don't do program. We do bricks and mortar, but we're doing bricks and mortar to house a program. So I have some sense of uh, whether we're doing it right. Kathy, you want to take that? I know we've got current programming, and then we've got a vision of what we'd like program to, to potentially be. So I can, I can turn that to, to Kathy. Yes, I mean, it, that definitely is still under development and um, we'll be looking at a lot of different options, but certainly we wanna incorporate um, trauma-informed uh, programs as well as vocational opportunities to make that transition easier. Um, you know, we'll be working with the, the, probably the vendors that we still, that we are currently working with to um, create better spaces for the, those programs so that they will um, you know, potentially be more effective or that we can um, involve more, more women. Um, programming with women also always involves connecting with children, with their children and maintaining those relationships where possible, um, trying to help the families move through the, um, the incarcerated time that the mom is serving. So um, there's lots of different aspects that we're looking at and um, we'll be, you know, as and plus, I mean, the facility is several years out, so we currently have a lot going on at the Chittenden facility um, that we're going to be looking at trying to enhance as well. 
And, and what we're looking at here, getting back to bricks and mortar. So the program is still a work in progress. You don't actually have a program to show us at this point. No, no we, we, we wouldn't have a program as far as what the specific reentry program is. That's, okay. This is part of the team that, that we've comprised with, with members of, of our team, BGS, and then yeah. um, conversations with our, our community providers to really build that. What, what do they want to see? Um, so we're still at the philosophical level? Yes. Okay, and, and we can look forward to a program data. But on the bricks and mortar, is, is this going to be a a reworking of an exist the existing facility in Chittenden County, or are you talking about a new location? Well, this is this is what the next phase of this feasibility study will determine, um, and, and BGS can speak to this as, as well. But part of what we need to find is is we need to find a site for this new facility. Um, we need to determine if it is indeed a a standalone reentry facility. If it's combined with a new medium security facility, um, is it? You know, there, there are several several things that we need to determine through through the uh, the next phase. Once the uh, the contractor is is selected, and we'll be working with them along with BGS on on site selection, building size, building design. Um, it's it's very early in in those stages. Shall we hear from uh, Mr. D'Agostino? Senator, good afternoon, everyone. I'm not sure that I have anything more to add that hasn't already been said, unless anyone has any questions specific to the funding in the capital bill for, for the, the work that's being done toward this. Okay, committee, and we'll ask before we get to move on to BGS. I'm just going to put in two cents. I, I appreciate, I think it's a valid point that when you're dealing with women, you got to deal with the fact that many of them are parents. I just want to throw in that's also often the case with the men. Boy, that's one. Okay, uh, next up is uh, uh, from BGS. I don't see Joe Asher here. That's I'm here. Oh, you're here. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I know, I, I'm coming live. Uh, I actually want to defer to Brenda Karish first, and I'll back her up. Okay, it needs her project. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> you got lucky. You didn't have to pronounce my name. <laughs> oh, Sabrina Karish. <laughs> you know, that's a long name, but it's phonetically very easy. <laughs> Um, so I am Sabrina Karish. I am the project manager with BGS. Um, as Al had said, we are currently on the street accepting proposals for A&E services for the next phase of the feasibility study. Bids are actually due tomorrow, and then we'll enter the selection process. And we hope to have a contract in place in May, and then we will begin the design process. And I don't have much else to add, but I'm happy to answer questions. Hey. Senator Mazza, you must have questions. Want to ask them about planning? <laughs> they know who is privatizing it or not. Senator Mazza wants to know if you're thinking of privatizing. He doesn't mean that. That was just to see if he could get a rise out of me. <laughs> Say that. That was that was a question for DOC. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know why you were here. I just know why you're here. You're in support of privatizing, right? Depends what you're privatizing. No, the, the facility, yeah. <laughs> no, no, okay. Well, we're moving right along. Uh, Eric, you want to talk to us? We're all here generally to support the policy effort of BG Eric Kilcorn BGS, for the record. Um, we, we BGS are in a support capacity to help ex execute the policies that are um, determined by uh, corrections. So uh, we, we stand ready, as Sabrina said, we're gonna have, uh, I think we're gonna have our P responses in another week or so. And we just keep this process moving. There are a lot of moving parts, a lot of things to look at. Um, 
in a lot of ways this can come together. And so our job over the next almost not quite a year is, is to really thoroughly vet all of those options, look what makes sense for best practices for what they're trying to do, look at what properties are on the table, both ones that we currently control and stuff that's available out there and figure out the best mix of elements to keep this project moving forward at the speed of government. <laughs> Maybe faster. <laughs> <laughs> what an easy task. You got a big job ahead of you. Uh, committee, I think we're poised to set a world's record. Uh, any further questions? I'm good. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. I'm gonna. I, I feel the need to stretch this out, so I'll be taken seriously. You got a fine chair. Did I get fine? You got a fine chair. Okay, that'd be good. Um, thank you. Thank you all. If there's no further business. I'll uh, adjourn the committee for the day. That was good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.